Good morning. It's uh, Thursday morning. Hope that uh, today's a great day for you and it's a great week. Got nice sunshine out there today and a really, really great day. Um, going to get colder this weekend, but uh, today is a great day. Of course, every day is a great day because uh, we serve a great God. We're going to continue with our Thursday reading. Uh, t- today is Seeing an Invisible God. Uh, again, written by a brother named Kyle Butt. He's a great writer and great theologian and, and great speaker. Um, this comes from, the, the basis of this writing comes from the passage in Romans chapter 1, verse 20 that states, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His e- eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. Currently in the United States, Unbelief and non-religion are the fastest growing religions in the country. Skeptical organizations are popping up by the hundreds on our university campuses and, and atheistic writings are topping the bestseller list. In fact, more than 20 million U.S. citizens claim to be agnostics and atheists. The current generation, who are teenagers now, is dealing with unbelief on a scale that is unprecedented in the history of our country. What is at the root of this epidemic skepticism? We are told that modern science and critical thinking have finally done away with the obsolete concept of a divine creator. Those who have been enlightened and follow the evidence where where it leads, we are informed, have been forced to abandon the idea of God because there is not any quote-unquote evidence of his existence. So goes the party line of unbelief. In truth, however, there is more than enough evidence to know for a fact that a divine creator exists. When we look at the universe and the things that we can touch, see, taste, hear, and smell, they force all honest-hearted people to the conclusion that there is a God. How is that the case? When we see a laptop computer on a bench... We know intelligent men and women designed and manufactured it, yet the human brain is the most advanced computing system anyone has ever seen. When we see an artificial prosthetic hand, we know brilliant engineers were behind its design. One look at a regular human hand, however, shows the superior, superiority over it, of it over any prosthesis. Just as fingerprints match a person to a scene, So the hallmarks and fingerprints of God's design and power provide ample evidence of His existence. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork, says the psalmist in chapter 19, verse 1 of the Psalms. Today, I will pray for those who reject the knowledge of God. I will open my eyes to the evidence of God in the universe, and I will teach those in my sphere of influence to accept God as the Creator. Again, we serve a big God, a wonderful God, a mighty God, and and one only has to look around um, at the things are around us, uh, things that were created, the the complexity of it, the magnificence of it, how it all works together simultaneously um, to uh, be the world that we know around us. And you know, if we look at a lot of those things, and and very many of those things are off. At, at all, very little at all, it causes problems. But when they work uh, in conjunction with each other, the way God designed them to in perfect sequence and perfect harmony, um, and when we come to understand uh, uh, the impacts of those things, we realize that it is a product of intelligent design. And that intelligent design is the design of God himself. We serve a big God. We serve a mighty God. And, uh, I hope that uh, as you um, as you continue to you know navigate life, navigate uh, the ins and outs, the the obstacles and and the freeways, um, that you will just just always be looking for God, always be looking for um, His design, for His fingerprints on the things around us, and, and I hope that you will uh, just continue to understand and acknowledge that we serve an amazing big God, and He's big enough to handle. Uh, all of the things that that burden us, that weigh us down, um, and keep us from 
the life that he truly wants us to live. And, and so when we um, acknowledge that great big God, uh, lay your burdens down at his feet, uh, take on his burden, which is much lighter, and carry his load, um, and just walk with him and let him bless your life. Hope this is encouraging to you. I hope you have a great day today. We'll see you all uh, tomorrow morning, Friday morning, for another song and a, another story. Have a great day. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope.